evening, and welcome back, Sunny Lane. Woo, it's awesome to be back on a Sunday evening, isn't it? And what better reason to come back but to worship the Lord. Amen? All right, guys, you know the, you know the drill. I'm going to need you guys to stand if you're able because we're going to worship. Amen? This world is not my home. I'm here before a moment. It's all I've ever known. But this world is not my home. The fight is not my own. These burdens aren't my future. The empty tomb has shown. I am bound for glory. I am free. Feet will stand on holy ground. I am bound for glory. The saving work is done. Death is not my ending. My God has overcome. I am bound for glory. I am free. will stand on holy ground. I am bound for glory. Yes, bound for glory. Okay, church. All my pain, hurt, and shame gone when Jesus calls my name. Endless joy, endless praise, all when Jesus calls my name, all my pain, hurt, and shame gone. When Jesus calls my name, endless joy, endless praise. All oh, when Jesus calls my name, I am free because I'm bound. I am bound for heaven's gate, where my feet will stand on holy ground. I am bound for. Feet will stand on holy ground. I am bound for glory. Where my feet will stand on holy ground, I am bound for glory. Oh, bound for glory. Yes, bound for glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good to see you tonight. Are you glad to be in God's house tonight? Say amen. amen. All right. Listen, a lot of guests here tonight. Uh, we want to recognize and thank Craig Hobbs and his wife, Tracy, uh, for being here. Craig preached for us Wednesday night. And so, man, we welcome you, brother. Uh, for those of you that don't know this, I mentioned this Wednesday night, but brother Craig and I uh, are doing a breakout session at the Evangelism Conference Tuesday on uh, revival and how to have a real revival. And we need that in America, amen? And we need that in the church. And so anyway, uh, Craig asked me to partner with him, and I'm honored to do that. And so he's here for that. And so, brother, appreciate you being here. And man, do we got the living faith here, guys? So, all right, man, good to see you guys here tonight. So we're glad you're here. And we praise the Lord for you being here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's just ask God's blessing, and we'll talk a little bit more about Brother Bill and his ministry here in a minute. Let's pray. Father God, we, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you tonight. God, we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, we know that one day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And God, we can rest in that tonight. So Lord, we know that we're not here tonight by accident or chance, but we're here by divine appointment. Lord, you brought us here tonight because you specifically have got a word for us. 
So God, I pray you give us ears to hear what your spirit has to say. And Lord, we just invite your presence into us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Let's worship. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raven shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame. We'll vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Oh, love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Oh, oh, oh. So I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I 
could stand and sing. I am a child of God. 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 And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. shared with you this morning. Uh, so just so you know, again, we're taking an offering for the ministry of Compel. This is Compel Sunday. I shared with you all the ministries that are involved literally all over the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ this ministry is doing uh, and, and all kinds of places, all kinds of areas. And so we've asked you to be praying about an offering. And so tonight it's going to be that opportunity. So if you give an offering tonight, you want to put it in an envelope, if you want to get a record of it, just put it in the envelope right in front of you where it says other Make sure and write compel, and if you would, just put it in the white buckets that say tithes and offerings, and every dime that you give tonight will go to this ministry, and let's be a blessing to Brother Bill in this ministry. All right, amen? All right, Brother Bill, we're going to sing another song, and then you come and you preach the Word of God to us. Father God, we again thank you for the opportunity that you've given us tonight to come worship you in spirit and truth. So Lord, as we, as we come right now, we just invite your presence among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Father God, we thank you. For the breath that you've given us, Father, every day that we may use it to worship and glorify you in all things, Lord. Because we know from the first breath that we take in our lives to the last one, they all belong to you. And we thank you daily for this opportunity to use it for your glory. And on that 
day when my strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Oh, forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. I worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I'll worship your holy name and bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Uh, thank you, Chris, and all our musicians. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Thank the Lord for the good music. Good to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday night. Amen. Well, take your Bible tonight and turn to the book of Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, and as Brother Danny said, we are uh, having the evangelism conference here in Oklahoma tomorrow and Tuesday, and, and uh, I thank God for the invitation to come and speak uh, again this year. I think three years ago, I spoke at the evangelism conference here, and it's good to be back uh, this year, and I was just thinking of all the places that I've preached in Oklahoma through the years, and uh, just been a blessing. Uh, I've seen a lot of people saved in this state, and and uh, thank God for that. And uh, it's always good to be here at Sunny Lane. And I want to uh, again thank the church for all the uh, encouragement, blessings, prayers, and uh, the financial support that you give us to keep carrying the gospel around the world. And uh, let me just share this with you because uh, uh, you have a big part in this. Um, we have a Bible college for those that don't know. Uh, we just had students from India, but now we've got students from uh, uh, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Burma, Myanmar. And just think about that. Just a, a little school there in a remote area of India is sheep not having a shepherd. Now, uh, the word or the phrase that we have in our Bible, moved with compassion, is one word in the original language. It's used 12 times in the New Testament, eight times. It's directly connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was moved with compassion. Now, I want to talk about this for a moment because sometimes we get a wrong impression of what this really is. And so I want us to just get real tonight, as Jim Semblis says many times up there at Brooklyn Town. I want us to have some real talk tonight. Can I hear an amen? amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, get real for a minute. Get real. How many of you ever pulled up on a Walmart parking lot or up to a traffic light and there's a man or a woman sitting there with a cardboard sign. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How many of you? Amen. Hey, can we just get honest? Right. Some of us, we look at that person and our first thought is, that lazy bum needs to get a job. Amen. Let's just get real. We don't know anything about him. We don't know what caused his him or her to be there. We don't know any, but we, well, but bless God, he ought to just get a job. Yeah. Amen. Or we might be a little more compassionate and uh, roll down our window and say, hey, can I go buy you a sandwich? Or you might even give them a dollar or two or a five dollar bill. And here's, here's the reality of it, and, and we're just, we're being real tonight. Here's the reality. We feel sorry for them. We pity them. We may wish that they didn't have uh, such a, an awful uh, uh, stage in life they're going through, but, but this is not at all what Jesus is talking about here. That's good. 
When he said, I moved with compassion, what it meant is this. It was to get under the burden of their pain. It was to feel what they're feeling. To experience what they're experiencing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we begin to have that kind of burden in the church, we couldn't have enough seats to put out. Every chair would be full That's tonight. Good, That's good. Uh, right here at Sunny Lane, uh, I don't know if it was the last time I was here, my wife was, and I were staying over at the uh, Holiday Inn Express, and uh, Sunday morning, first uh, morning we were here, we pulled out of the uh, parking lot of the Holiday Inn Express. We went to the traffic light right there in front of Walmart, and there's a guy sitting over there with a cardboard sign. Yeah. And I'm telling you, as clear as I'm preaching to you tonight, the Holy Spirit said, pull over there and invite him to church. Yeah. And so we went over there, and I invited him to church. Didn't really think he would come. And he bailed off, got in the truck, and he came, and y'all ministered to him. Yeah. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying now? But even at that, that's not really getting under the burden of it. To feel their pain, to know what they're going through, to experience what's going on in their life. Let, let me give you an illustration of what I'm talking about. One chapter earlier, uh, there was a man that was full of leprosy. If you're still with me, say I'm with you. He was full of leprosy, and what that means is he was the point of death. And I don't know if you've been around or seen pictures or know anything about leprosy, but uh, I had the privilege to speak in the largest leper colony in the world uh, many years ago, and I saw some of the most horrific sights I've ever seen in that uh, leper colony. And, and when a man or a woman is the, at the end of leprosy, uh, let me tell you a little bit about their body. Their, their, their fingers and toes are probably gone because uh, leprosy does away with the feelings in the nerve endings, and so they would pick up something that would that was hot, but they wouldn't feel it. They would, they would pick up something that was sharp, and it would cut them, but they wouldn't feel it. And gangrene would set in, and they would lose their fingers and toes. And, and then open sores would begin to, to, to develop all over their body, and, and this putrid smell would become to, uh, come flowing out of their body. And then their face would be furrowed like a, a lion, and, and they, didn't, they wouldn't even really look human. And, and back in the Bible days, when someone uh, contracted leprosy, they, they couldn't be around folks. They had to walk downwind 100, 150 feet and they had to cover their mouth hollering, unclean, unclean. Right. You couldn't even get around this person because of the smell of their body. Think about it. When was the last time that man had embraced his wife? When was the last time his children had climbed up in his lap and say, Daddy, I love you? When was the last time he sat across the table from a friend and had a cup of tea? This man's dying. There's no hope for him, but he breaks through the crowd according to Matthew chapter 8, and he finds himself at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus looks at him and says, what do you want me to do? And he said, I, I want you to heal me of this dreaded disease of leprosy. I know and This is what the man said. He said, I know you can, will you? And Jesus said, I will. And the Bible says Jesus touched him. Yeah. 39 times in the New Testament, the word touched is used. 29 times it speaks of Jesus. And this word, this particular time, and you could read it probably in other accounts where the word touched is used, it doesn't mean that he put his palm on his forehead or he touched him with his index finger. It meant that he lifted the man up, he embraced himself, he attached himself to this man before he was healed with all of his disease, with all of the sores, with all of the things going on in his body. Jesus embraced the man. What if we as the church tonight would begin to embrace sinners? Yeah. Preach. Because you see, leprosy is a picture of sin and it's eating life away from those that we come in contact with every single day and they're just wanting to know, does somebody care? Well, somebody, is anybody in the house? Yes. Right? Preach. Some of y'all heard me tell this story when uh, my wife and I lived in Nashville for about seven years uh, we got involved in uh, the Jefferson Street Bridge Ministry, the bridge ministry that Kent and Candy Christmas, Candy Hemphill, if you keep up with gospel, Southern Gospel music, uh, they, it's a huge ministry. It was big then, but it's much larger now. And every Tuesday night, they have worship service for the homeless in Nashville, Tennessee. And people come under the Jefferson Street Bridge, and they, they, uh, we, have, we have singing. I mean, some of the top gospel artists to come under that bridge and sing and They'll invite some of us to come preach, and, 
And, um, and I preached down there, and we've had 30 saved. We've had 75 saved. We've had 50 saved, and, and then they'll feed them a good meal, and then they'll send them away with a, uh, with a bag full of uh, non-perishable food items. Some of them will get a sleeping bag. Maybe somebody will get a bicycle. They get Bibles, and, and so, man, we began to go down there and preach and minister, and I remember one night, Brother Danny, I was up preaching, and right in the middle of my sermon, uh, this homeless lady comes up and puts her head right in my chest, and she literally wet my shirt with her tears as I preached the gospel. Well, we've been going down there so much. Some of the folks that went to the church there, they came to me and said, Big Papa, would you baptize us? I said, well, we'll have to talk to Pastor Kent, Kent and, and, uh, and Candy. And we talked to them. They were excited about it. And they said, sure. So uh, we set up a Sunday night. We had a, our church had a big, big bus, big trailways bus. And, and so we put that, set that bus with a driver down to the Jefferson Street Bridge. We filled up that bus with homeless people, and we brought them into our church facility. And man, we had a we had a feast waiting on them. They they ate out of china plates, and they drank out of crystal glasses. And we the women were dressed uh, uh, to the tea, the men were dressed to the nines, and we waited on them hand and foot. We gave them sacks full of non-perishable food items, and we gave them sleeping bags and Bible and and just really tried to minister to them and love on them. We went in our worship center. We had a great time of praise and worship. We had a time in the Word. And then I started baptizing folks. After I baptized the first three or four of them, you couldn't see the bottom of our baptistry. It was so dirty. These are dirty people. Street people. Diseased people. One guy we baptized was in a wheelchair. Some of the men in the church helped me baptize him, and they got him into the baptistry. When uh, I lifted my hand to say, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they, they put him under the water for me, and when, he, when they brought him back up, he threw both hands up in the air, and he began to shout, praise God. And here's what he said. He said, I never thought anybody would love me enough to baptize me. Amen. Amen. We're talking about touching people. Well, our church was excited, man. I mean, we were fired up, and I was on cloud nine. I mean, I was, I, I was ready to uh, uh, assault hell with a water pistol. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and one of our resident Pharisees came up to me. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> How many of you believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. Well, so are the Pharisees. Yes. She came up to me and she said, now, Pastor, I know you're all excited about this, but who in our congregation will want to get in those waters after all those nasty people have been in there? You know what she needed? A good dose of Jesus. Because yes. that's who Jesus died for. Can I hear an amen right there? Yes. You know, and I'm glad this church is not, uh, you know, just for one kind of person or one color of person or, right. or one type of person. This is a church where everybody's welcome. No matter the color of your skin or what side of the tracks you live on. You see, there's a lot of churches around America. They're not churches. They're just country clubs with a steeple on top of them. When we say that only certain people can come through our doors, we have ceased to be the body of Christ. Is anybody getting anything out of what I'm saying? Jesus, what Jesus saw we see the vision of the shepherd. But here's the second thing I want you to see. If you're still with me, say, I'm with you. He saw the sheep moving, scattered, like sheep not having a, a shepherd. We see not only the vision of the shepherd, but the value of the sheep. Now, let's get real again. When Jesus calls a sheep, he's not giving us a compliment. I said, when Jesus calls a sheep, he's not giving us a compliment. Number one, sheep had no defense mechanism. Right. They just stand there while the wolf attacked them. I mean, what they're going to do? Throw throw cotton balls at the wolf? I don't know. Right. They have no way to defend themselves. Sheep have no sense of direction. Do you know that? That's why the shepherd always had to go out with a crook of his staff and get them out of a, a, a ditch or get them out of some dangerous place. They had no sense of direction. And I can identify with that. I have no sense of direction. I can get lost in a Walmart parking lot. I'm not lying to you. I, I have a GPS, but I just don't like a woman telling me where to turn. Can I hear an amen from the guys? And she, listen, I'm not trying to offend you, defend you, I mean, offend you. 
Sheep not only were defenseless and directionless, they were dumb. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Can we just get real again? Yeah. 99 times out of 100 when we get in trouble and we get in a bind, it's because we did something stupid. Yeah. Right. We said something stupid. Right. Now think about it. The sheep could do nothing for the shepherd, but the shepherd had to do everything for the sheep. And when Jesus looks at us, he sees us, he has compassion on us as sheep without a shepherd. Now think about this. You remember what Jesus said? He said, what shall it profit a man yeah. if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yeah. Harrison Ford, who's been in many blockbuster movies and who is a multi-multi-millionaire, he was interviewed and he once said this, he said, Everyone wants what they don't have, and what I don't have is peace. Right. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Amen. Think about it. What if tonight you acquired all the silver, all the gold, all the oil, all the natural resources of the world, all the wealth of the world became yours? But in the next 10 days, you died and went to hell. It wouldn't help you one bit. That's right. Can I hear an amen right here? Amen. And people are running after money, and they're in love with money, and they're doing all kind of evil because of their love for money. But one day, they'll be, this, the, this money will do nothing for you. Right. The most important thing is to be sure you're saved. Think about it. What should a prophet man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? You know what the Lord's saying, saying to us tonight? Your soul is more valuable than all the resources of the world. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, we, we, shouldn't, we, we shouldn't be content when one person gets saved because there's millions that need Jesus. But I want to tell you something. The Bible says there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels when somebody gets saved. Yeah. You know what? The soul is valuable. Jesus died for that person. You know, I've been in a lot of revivals, and this is my 39th year, starting my 39th year this month in full-time evangelism. And, uh, you know, I've heard people say, well, if only one person gets saved in this revival, it'll be worth all the effort. And then one little old boy or girl gets saved, and somebody say, well, we spent all that money and that time, and only one person got saved. Yeah, right. yeah. We missed it. Right. Amen. My Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish. It's his desire that all men everywhere be saved. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. So that person that lives next door to you, that person you work with, that person that, you, that checks you out at the grocery store, that person that changes your oil, that person that you see from time to time walking your dog in the neighborhood, that person Jesus died for. And their soul is more valuable than all the money in the world. Right. The great evangelist D.L. Mooney was always asked to give an interview to the reporters, but he very seldom gave an interview. But one afternoon, he allowed a newspaper reporter to come to his hotel room. And so the hotel room was filled with this man's questions. And the first question out of the reporter's mouth to Dale Moody was this, what makes you tick? What gets you up in the morning? What drives you? Why do you do what you do? D.L. Moody said to the reporter, look out the window and tell me what do you see? He said, I see ladies shopping. I see men conducting business. I see children on their way to school and playing. And Moody said, that's the difference between you and me. When I look out the window, I see souls. Yeah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I enjoy sports. But many times... While I'm sitting in the stadium trying to enjoy a football game, all I can think about are the thousands of people around me that are lost without Christ. Amen. Amen. And they're getting drunk and they're cheering. And their whole life is about their football team. Their whole life is about getting drunk. The whole life is about a party. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, listen, they're, they're, they don't understand there's more to life than just a buzz or a high or to get drunk or to sleep around or, or to get this feeling or that feeling. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, we've got to be busy about the Father's business. Yeah. The sheep are lost. 
But let me give you one more thing. You still with me if you are? Say amen. amen. Jesus went. We see the vision of the shepherd because he saw. And then he, he shows us the value of the sheep. And then, I want you to see, third of all, Jesus said, the, we hear the voice of our Savior. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest that he sent out labors in the harvest. Now, right earlier in this, we read he was moved with compassion. And now he says, hey, hey, guys, you pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors in the harvest because there's millions out there that need Christ. Amen. Millions out there that need Christ. We need to follow the example of our Lord and Savior, right or wrong. Amen. He stood over Jerusalem and he wept and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered you to myself as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not come to me. The Apostle Paul, when you read the book of Romans, chapters 9 and 10, Paul said in chapter 9, If it were possible, I would die and go to hell that Israel might be saved. Right. In chapter 10, he shows us the compassion and the urgency that he has in his heart for Israel to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And now the, the, the Savior, our Lord, is saying, hey, listen, this is urgent. You need to pray. You need to cry out to the Father to send forth laborers right. into the harvest. Jesus was moved with compassion. The church needs to be moved with compassion Amen. tonight. Amen. How moved was Jesus? Well, we believe as a priest this morning, Jesus is God. Come on, amen. amen. Who hung on that cross? God did in the flesh. Amen. So Jesus was so moved, he came out of heaven to this earth. He was so moved, he lived 33 and a half years on this earth and never sinned, and he lived a perfect life, a righteous life for you and me. He was so moved that he allowed wicked men to take him with, and beat him with a cat of nine tails until you couldn't even recognize that he was a human being. He was so moved that he allowed men to take six-inch nails and nail his hands to the cross and a nine-inch spike through his feet. He was so moved he hung there for six hours and even looked at a man that had been raving against him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. He, he was so moved. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He was so moved. He said, it is finished. He paid the price for our sin in past, present, and future, so moved that he literally died on that cross. He was so moved he went to an empty tomb. He was so moved on the third day he rose again from the dead. He was so moved he walked on this earth for another 40 days to prove to us he was the resurrected Lord. After 40 days, he was so moved he ascended back to the Father. He was so moved. Now he's sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for the saints, preparing a place for us. Honey, that's getting moved right there. Not ought to get us off our seat on our feet and in the street. Amen. Telling somebody about Jesus. Yes. Now notice over in chapter 10, we went over to verse 1 after he had said to these disciples, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Notice what, he happened, notice what happened. And when he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and disease. And he begins to list the name of these disciples, and, the, and he sent out the twelve. You see, here's, it's, it's an amazing thing. The very ones that Jesus told to pray this prayer, that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into the harvest, were the very first ones that went. Yeah. Now, as a pastor, Brother Danny, I'd have people come to me from time to time and say, you know what, Brother Bill, our church needs this. We, we need a bus ministry, or we need this ministry. And uh, what they were saying is, here's what you need to do. Yeah. So I learned that pretty quick, you know, pretty early in my ministry. So when somebody would come to me, like a lady came to me one time, she said, I'd love for our church to start a bus ministry. And I said, praise God, me too. <laughs> she said, for real? I said, yeah, for real. And you're going to be the bus captain. She said, well, you don't think our church needs to buy a bus? I said, no. When you fill your car up with people on Sunday morning, then we'll get a van. And when you get that van full, we'll buy a bus. Amen. Now, here's what I'm saying to you tonight. We don't have to wait for something. Listen, all of us can do something right now. Amen. You can get on your knees tonight before you go to bed and say, Lord, please send forth labors into the harvest. Yes. I guarantee you this church will load you up with gospel tracts. 
I, I'm a believer in gospel tracts. I pass them out all the time. Matter of fact, I was in one city in Louisiana, and I went to McDonald's on the way to church to get me a bottle of water. And so I you know, pulled up to pay for the water. And uh, then uh, I gave that girl a, a gospel tract. And then when I got to the next window, uh, it was the same girl. And she gave me my bottle of water. I paid over here, and she gave me my bottle of water. I said, you look just like the girl that I paid. She said, well, I am. I said, well, I believe the Lord wants me and you to talk. Yeah. I said, well, I'm, I'm down here at this church preaching revival. Would you come tomorrow night? She said, well, I can't come tomorrow night. I'm working, but I'll come the next night. And I've heard that a million times. Yeah. But you know what? She showed up. Yeah. And know what? She got saved. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? We extended the revival another night. She brought a friend, and she got saved. Yeah. We can all do something. Amen. Can I hear an amen right there? One old boy, he got a burden for his friends, and uh, man, he just got saved, and he went home from revival one night, and on the way home from revival, he went by his friend's house, he knew he was lost, and he, uh, he, his buddy was watching a football game, and so he just pulled a chair up and sat right between him and the television, and the guy said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to sit here and pray to you get, until you get saved. You know what his buddy got saved? Amen. Yes. Years ago. A daughter and some grandkids begged their grandpa to come to a revival where I was preaching. And you know what? He came. He got saved. He was a town drunk. Yeah. Hadn't had a drop of liquor in 30, 40 years. Right. Amen. All it took was those kids inviting him. Right. Amen. He said, well, Bill, I've invited them over and over and over and invite them again. Yeah. Right. When I was going to seminary, and Dr. Gray Allison told us a story about two men that went to Bellevue Baptist Church. And uh, 69 Monday nights in a row, they went to the same guy's house, shared the gospel with him, invited him to church. They got the same response. They got a cussing, and the door was slammed in their face. On the 70th night, Monday night, they decided they would go visit somebody else. So they got another card, and they were going to go out and make that visit. And the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to go back and visit that guy again. On the 70th night, that guy got saved. Amen. You say, Bill, how long should I witness to him until they quit breathing? That's right. Amen. We've got to get a compassion and move with compassion for the law. We've got to hear what Jesus is saying. We've got to see what Jesus is doing and emulate our master. Can I hear an amen tonight? And I know y'all been pushing this, and it's a great idea, and it's a great thing. Who's your one? If everybody in here could win one person to Jesus between now and the end of the year, wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. Amen. So let me ask you something. Who's, who are you burdened for tonight? I was pastoring a church, and God was blessing. We had baptized like 36 Sundays in a row. Our attendance had tripled. And... Uh, there were some men in the church that got together and wanted to run me off. Now, one of these men had a son that was a bad, bad drug addict. And Brother Danny, I'm telling you, every time we, we had a prayer meeting at church or in homes, we prayed for that boy. But I never saw that man at the altar praying for his own son. But he was having, he was having secret meetings trying to get me run off. What if he'd have used the energy trying to get me run out of town to pray for his son to be saved? That's good. That's good. But a lot of folks were praying for the boy, and about 11 o'clock one night, I got a knock on my front door. Nobody came to our front door at my house, and, and uh, I went to the door, and there that boy was. He was broken. He was weeping. He said, uh, Brother Bill, if you'll let me come in, I need to talk to you. He came in, and he got saved in my living room. Amen. So you have children and grandchildren tonight. When's the last time you shed a tear for them? They need to be saved. Amen. Last year, my youngest grandson, his name's Hunter, Wendy and I went to Dallas to go uh, help celebrate his birthday. We, we just moved from Dallas back to Louisiana, for those that don't know. And, and uh, so we're in the restaurant. We, he chose the restaurant where we ate. And, and so uh, I, was, I was about half kid and half serious. I said, Hunter, it's your birthday, why don't you say the blessing? He said, okay. But I got an announcement to make first. I said, okay, what's that? He said, I just want to announce to everybody that I'm now a full-time Christian. I've been saved. Amen. Amen. 
10 year old kid. Not ashamed of the gospel. Let's ask God to give us boldness tonight. Let's ask God to give us a burden. Let's do like Vance Havner said. Let's bring Mr. Amen and Mr. Tears back to church. Let's begin to weep and baptize these altars once again with our tears for souls. I got to confess something to you. Uh, you know, I've never really been much of uh, uh, having a pet. Okay? Especially in the house. My dad said, animals outside, people inside. That's the way I was raised. But here recently, my wife and I got, have, a, have, a, have a puppy in our house. And I want to tell you something. I love that little puppy. But that puppy's not a human being. Right. Right. Some of us weep more over our pets Amen. Amen. than we do over people. Amen. That's good work. Who, who are you burdened for tonight? If, every, if, if this church depended on your soul winning, how many people would get saved this year? If this church depended on your prayers for the lost, by the way, let me say this. I see a lot of prayer lists through the years, and I'll see hundreds of names on there praying for the sick. You know, we pray, we spend a whole lot more time praying for the sick to stay out of heaven than we do the lost staying out of hell. Amen. That's good work. Amen. Now, if I get sick, I want Sonny Lane praying for me. But I want to tell you something. We ought not just pray for the sick by the hundreds and never pray for the lost. Amen. I got a friend right now, he's got cancer. It's uh, been in his kidneys, now it's attached to his liver. And he called me the other night. And he got a, had a CT scan. And, well, I actually called him to check on him. And, and he said, you know what? He said, Bill, he said, it's all good, man. He said, I know Jesus, and I know I'm going to heaven. And if God lets me live another 10 years or another 10 days, I'm going to give him praise and glory. And I'm going to try to tell everybody I can while I'm still breathing about Jesus. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's it. Amen or not? Let's pray. Now, I want us to do something a little, maybe a little different tonight as we have our invitation. Whoever's going to come and, and play, just begin to play softly. I know this is a Sunday night crowd, and there's a lot of believers here tonight, but I never take for granted that everybody's saved. But I want to ask you, just because I would be remiss if I didn't do this, we don't know if we got another night, another hour, another day. Come on, amen. So we need to be sure everybody knows the Lord here tonight. So if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know you're a child of God. You know you've been saved. I mean, there's been change in your life. You just didn't become a church member, get baptized, walk an aisle, say a prayer. But God's really changed your life. You become, uh, you, you're born again. You know that your place will be in heaven when you die or when Jesus comes back. Would you just raise your hand as a testimony tonight? All right? Now let me ask you this. That's just about everybody, but not everybody. For those that didn't raise your hand, even though some of you that did, that are still not sure in your heart. How many of you just, listen, I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not here to trick you. I'm not here to, uh, to hurt you. Getting saved doesn't hurt. Getting saved helps. And I wonder how many young people, adults, visitors, members, how many of you here tonight? Maybe just one. Maybe half a dozen, but maybe just one. And this, listen, God doesn't send out a group text. He talks to us individually. So this is between you and God. Would there be one lady, one man, one teenager, one boy, one girl, one member, one guest, or five or six, I don't know. If you got judgment day on us, and you need to, because one day you're going to stand before God. The prophet Amos said, prepare to meet God. Paul said in Romans 14, 12, so then every man should give an account of himself before the Lord. So if you're not saved tonight or you're not sure about that, you're among people that love you, you're in a safe place tonight. And if that's you, would you just raise your hand up real, real high and say, I need to be saved tonight or I need to get it settled tonight. I'm just not sure. Anybody? I'm, I'm looking. I haven't seen anybody yet. I'm still looking. Anybody? Keep it up for a second where I can find you. Anybody? All right, I don't see a hand. 
You know what that tells me? I can't see in your heart. All I can do is take your word for it. That tells me everybody in here tonight claims to know Jesus Christ. And if that's so, if we're all saved, praise God. But there's more people in here than Jesus had. And they turned the world upside down for Christ. Come on, amen. So here's what I want us to do tonight. First of all, I want us to confess sin. Because sin, when we have sin in our life, it grieves the Holy Spirit. And we're not the soul winner we, we need to be when we're not right with God. We don't have the zeal for souls and for the Lord like we need to be. So if there's something you need to confess to God tonight, we're going to have a time of prayer to confess it. But also, here's what I want us to do tonight. I want us to go, and everybody, I want everybody in the building to do it, if you will. We spread out enough if you're concerned about COVID or you can kind of lay back a little bit in the aisle and, and kind of distance yourself. But I want us to gather around from one wall to the other and I want to ask God to break our heart for what breaks his and that's souls, amen? Maybe God's calling somebody to preach tonight, go to the mission field, be an evangelist, a pastor. Maybe some other ministry that God's burdening your heart, planting in your heart. Just come share that with Brother Dan. But can we stand together and I'm going to pray? And after I get through praying, we're going to sing. And after we've sung just a little bit, I want us to have a time of prayer together and ask God to break our heart for souls. And I want you to come pray for lost people tonight. Pray that God would send forth laborers into the harvest field. Pray that God would use you. Pray God cleanse you tonight, fill you with his Holy Spirit. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Continue to move by your spirit. If there's anybody here that really needs to be saved, I pray they'd get saved before they walk off this property. Lord, I pray for all of us tonight that are your children, that our hearts and our lives would count for you and for souls in Jesus' name as we sing. Just come on, let's gather around the altar, then we're going to pray. Hey, folks, we just wanted to thank you so much for tuning in with us this morning online. It was a blessing to have you with us. Uh, we hope that the Word of God was able to be a minister to you and be able to breathe life into your soul. I, I do want you to know that if uh, you personally invited Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior today online, man, we would love to help you with that. Minister to you any way we can. We would love to do that. And so we know that, you know, really the Bible tells us really the next step of obedience is just to make our decision public the best way we know how. So here's what we would like to encourage you to do. Uh, you'll see on the screen, uh, there's a couple of ways you can contact us. First of all, you can call us at 405 677 0591, 405-677-0591, or if you want to email us, you can email us at prayeratthelane.tv. Uh, we've got somebody actually by the phone right now that's waiting. So if you'll call us, just say, hey, listen, I've invited Christ into my heart. We've actually got some material for you to help you, some Bible studies to help you as you walk with the Lord. And then let me say this, maybe, maybe you just need some prayer Today, we would love to pray with you and minister to you any way we can. So we've got somebody waiting by the phone to do that also. So, man, just call us at that phone number or email us. We'd love to minister with you. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. And we praise the Lord for this opportunity to serve you. God bless you. Have a great day.